Hello, everyone. Hello from the heart of Israel. KPMG boss steps aside after stop moaning comment. A lot of people on LinkedIn are talking about this. Uh, the KPMG boss steps aside after stop moaning comment. Bill Michael reportedly told consultants to stop moaning about the impact of the pandemic and lockdown on people's lives and to stop playing the victim card. He later apologized, saying the comments did not reflect his beliefs. And this is just one guy at the top of the pyramid who actually expressed what was on his mind. Think about all the other people who have similar things on their mind. All of us, it's human nature. And we don't express those things or, you know, we don't air those thoughts. But all that toxic energy has been building up in our world for decades because we all have these negative thoughts about other people. And this is just a person in a very, very powerful position who actually expressed his um what he what was on his mind. It's not very politically correct to do that in today's world, but he did, and he's going to pay a high price for it. Um, now, what I am concerned about is that we have all these people in corporations dealing with making sure things like this don't happen. We have all these DEI experts, and DEI is actually for me, it's a relatively new term, like I said, like biodiversity yesterday. Um, hi, good morning, Yoni. Uh, for me, DEI is a relatively new term that I heard maybe for the first time a year ago. So according to LinkedIn news editors, the demand for DEI experts has skyrocketed during the past year. We have all these new experts, and I don't have anything against them. They are very evolved people, but obviously something's not working because we have all these DEI experts. Everyone's hiring DEI experts, and we still have all this toxic energy, and we still have somebody at the top of a really, really big company saying something idiotic like this that the whole world just heard. So the demand for DEI experts has skyrocketed during the past year. According to LinkedIn News, protests sparked by the police-involved shootings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor caused organizations around the world to reckon with systematic racism and a lack of diversity in positions of power. They were like, we have a big problem, let's deal with it. Companies, large and small, turned to diversity experts who could help them bring new voices into their organizations. Hiring for these roles increased more than 90% since 2019. It's a race to confront and dismantle systematic racism in our organizations. So with all due respect and with all the good intentions that the people, these leaders had to hire DEI experts, you can't dismantle systematic racism by doing a few superficial things like hiring certain people, changing a few words here and there. Not that I'm criticizing or disregarding these intentions that were probably good intentions to fix things, but it's going to take a lot more. Obviously, it's going to take a lot more if, you know, people at the top of the pyramid are still behaving this way, like it's the 1980s and nobody's going to hear what you say outside of the conference. Uh, my comment on the LinkedIn post that was upvoted a lot, so I'm repeating it here. I love that leaders are finally getting to the core of the issue, human nature. They understand humans must get along for the company to function. Top DEI expert, uh, Darnisa Amand Jackson says, we are both the villain and the hero in this story. And I love that statement of hers. Yes, we are all designed with both good and bad forces inside us and need to learn how to balance them to make our world sustainable. We can't wait for everyone to smarten up and realize this. It won't come naturally. We will have to systematically invest in human connection to override our built-in egoistic tendencies. So they're talking about, you know, the, the heads of these organizations, they want to dismantle systematic racism in our organizations. You're going to have to systematically invest in human connection to do that. Not for a month, not for two months, but for quite a while, uh, maybe from now till forever. And uh, companies that actually do that probably won't have to fire anyone. I'm going to get into all the layoffs that we're seeing everywhere in all industries in a second.
I also just replied to Enrique's post. He also just wrote about it, that DEI is becoming a huge occupation uh, in the HR world. I love that companies are taking the human to human aspects of work so seriously, but it's still very superficial. If what they were doing was working and truly connecting people correctly, we wouldn't be seeing all these layoffs and the rise in mental health stats because Enrique says he hopes after the diversity issue, they'll get to the mental health issue, which is also a huge problem. Not that I have any criticism for the experts who are usually very evolved leaders, these DEI experts, and working under tough conditions and egoistic systems that are not ready for massive change. We are simply not getting to the root of the problem, and that is understanding human nature and why we hate people who are different than us. As long as we don't get to the root of this racism problem, why we hate people who are different than us and what can be done about it, layoffs will continue to escalate. That's what I'm saying. And I'm going to keep talking about this and you're going to see that that's what's gonna be happening going forward. Some of these leaders are admitting business is down while others are reshuffling. Heineken plans to lay off 8,000 employees, amounting to about 10% of its workforce to cope with losses it has incurred during the pandemic. Shell, there will be as many as 9,000 job losses over the next two years with cuts already announced in the Netherlands, the UK and Malaysia. A second round of voluntary redundancies is also underway. That's a new thing, voluntary. Bell, 100 Bell media layoffs in Canadian newsrooms. They just fired some really famous newsroom guy and people are just shocked. The stations were pulled while live on air with no explanation and many employees found out they lost their jobs via social media. Now, Shell and Bell, I was born in Canada and really these are the first two brands I came into contact with in my life. Uh, we always, always put gas in our cars, in our Jeep uh, at the Shell's a gas station next to my father's company it was the first brand I ever saw. It was, you know, I, I remember like being five and always looking at the Shell logo above me, you know, from inside the Jeep. Bell Canada, I mean, really, there was no other, it's not like in those days that we have nowadays, you know, 20,000 service providers and everything. No, in those days, it was just Bell Canada. Your connection to the world was through one phone in your house and that's it and it that phone was connected by bell canada so bell and shell to hear that these two companies are letting people go for me it's like it's the foundation of society okay it's canada but still it's the foundation of society it's like oh my god about 1500 new layoffs at air canada as services reduced a lot of uh, canadian uh Obviously, things aren't so great in Canada at the moment. Siemens Energy, 7,800 layoffs around the world will be part of an effort to make the company more competitive in its power and gas division. American Air warns of 13,000 layoffs. Now, this one is a killer. Highland employees who had felt like family reeling after layoffs. But the sudden layoffs and the way in which they were done has unsettled employees who had been part of a company that lists family as one of its core values and says on its website, our employees are our family. I'm just quoting what people said. It was a betrayal, a huge betrayal of all the values and integrity and ethics they've always talked about and tutored, one former employee said. There was no warning of potential staff reductions ahead of the announcement, which, which came during a Zoom meeting. Immediately after they were informed of their layoff via Zoom, laid off employees lost network access. So like A, you're fired, and B, we're hitting the button, and bye-bye. Bloomberg News, Bloomberg News has started layoffs, 100 to be affected by this. I mean, that's a bit scary. Bloomberg News, Bloomberg News like, sees the trends way ahead of everyone else. So again, let's examine the terminology behind being a DEI expert. D for diversity includes, but is not limited to race, color, ethnicity, nationality, religion, so religion, socioeconomic status, veteran status, education, marital status, language, age, gender, gender expression, gender identity, sexual orientation, mental or physical ability, genetic information, and learning styles. That's the diversity in DEI. 
The E is for equity. The guarantee of fair treatment, access, opportunity, and advancement for all while striving to identify and eliminate barriers that have prevented the full participation of some groups. Wonderful. Inclusion, authentically bringing traditionally excluded individuals and or groups into processes, activities, and decision policy making in a way that shares power and ensures equal access to opportunities and resources. So that's why we see companies everywhere scrambling to put more yellow, black people on their teams. Uh, this is the trend right now. So we are doing all these superficial things. From my perspective, they're superficial, and you'll explain, you'll understand why in a second. We're hiring people of different colors. We're changing the wording and communications. I have a friend that she's very involved in that, doing that for the UK government. All these policies and everything, they have to be worded differently so that they take in different parts of the community. But we are not fixing the root of the problem, understanding why we hate people who are different than us and applying a method that can pull us out of this mess. So what is racism? It has a purpose in our world. It's not just some random thing that we have to like brush past and you know carry on as normal. There's a purpose for racism in our world. Hatred is the dislike we feel toward anything that is not us. Our sense of uniqueness is deeply rooted in our psyche, but it is there for a good reason. We perceive only through opposites. If we didn't grasp the sensation of darkness, we wouldn't know that there is light. If we didn't feel what cold is, we wouldn't be able to feel warmth. Likewise, if we didn't feel hate, we wouldn't be able to feel love. Now, all this political stuff in the States that is seemingly just emerging over the last few years, and it's a po political and everything, it's much deeper than that. The black-white issue goes back decades. It's very deep-rooted hate, especially in American society, but elsewhere in the world also. We need to understand why we hate each other and that it's natural and that we can do something about it. And all that, all those emotions, those you know, really big emotions that we're all feeling these days, uh, there's we, there's something useful that we can do with all those negative emotions. They're here for a reason. We don't just need to like brush past as if it didn't happen. We don't need to like delete it from our history. You know, we need to use all these things that are happening. They're here for a purpose. So when hatred surfaces, we shouldn't try to stifle or deny it. Instead, we should make a conscious effort to increase our love for the object of our hatred to the point that it is bigger than the hatred that has surfaced. If all the parties involved in the manifestation of hatred participate in the effort, the result will be greater love than before. If not, all parties take part. The whole process is hopeless. If all parts of society engage in strengthening our connection, we will increase the love in our world to levels that we've never seen before. And it will be precisely because of the unprecedented level of hatred, which forced us to forge a matching level of love. By denying the legitimacy of hate, we are denying the world of love and sentence it to more intense manifestations of hate that will soon follow. According to this paradigm, everything that we hate is actually a springboard to experiencing greater love. If today the most intense hatred manifests between races, this is precisely where the new level of love should appear. However, this will only happen if both sides work together on increasing the love between them to the extent of the current hatred. I realize this is a completely new way of thinking and contradicts practically everything we've been taught. But on the other hand, what we've been taught isn't working anymore. So it's time to try a new direction. Um, I saw that Zoom is hiring a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion, program managers, what are the qualifications, PowerPoint, conflict resolution, diversity training. <laughs> So the job description goes something like this. On the workforce side, you will bring deep expertise. And I love Zoom. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Zoom. Zoom is an incredible company. And they hired a great DEI expert, you know, a great diversity hire, uh, you know, way back at the beginning of the pandemic. Zoom is an incredible company. I'm just using this as an example. Lots of people are hiring uh, diversity experts now. 
On the workforce side, you will bring deep expertise and assist not only in developing and implementing initiatives that help to diversify top quality candidate pools, but also in designing candidate evaluation processes and educational, educational offerings that aim to mitigate bias and drive organization-wide behavioral change from the job description stage through the onboarding stage. So first of all, DEI experts are needed so we can hire, let's call it what it is, so we can hire more black people and do it in a way that doesn't offend them and in a way that they really feel welcome into the company and everything, great. On the workplace side, you will bring extensive experience and assist in creating initiatives that help to broaden people's perspectives of each other and cultivate empathy and sustainable behavioral change to foster a more equitable and inclusive work culture. So broaden people's perspective of each other and cultivate empathy and sustainable behavioral change. What methods are we using for, for bringing about these changes? If we're using the methods that we used in the previous egoistic stage, then they're not going to work now because we've entered a collective stage. We've entered a stage with new conditions. You know, there's new forces operating on the world. We need to learn to get all these forces into balance. Like nature, nature is maintaining its balance and we need to do the same thing. We need to start figuring out the good forces, the bad forces, they all have a purpose. All this love and hate in the world, everything in the world has a purpose. Like I said, there's hot, cold, love, hate. Why do we have all these things? This is how humans evolve. We can't evolve with just one side of things. We always need to have both things. That's how we advance. So we don't need to push it aside and we don't need to pretend it's not there. We need to take it out. We need to understand why the whole system was designed like this. It was designed for us so we could accelerate our human growth, so we could accelerate our human development. All these things serve a purpose. They can be a springboard to us going through this whole situation in a far more pleasant and beneficial way. So I hope that we will start understanding that it's not enough to fix these things by, you know, hiring more black people and fixing our communications and, you know, thinking about how we address people. No, we need to think about everything in a more integral way. We need to apply integral methods to everything. And that means that we treat everyone the same. We, we, we don't have special hiring processes for white people, you know? We don't have special terminology for white people. So why do we need special terminology for, for other races? You know, it's a bit funny. But understandable, of course, because the whole world is white and now we're trying to uh, even things out. And all those things are important. I'm not saying that those things aren't important. But it's not going to help to do all those things if we don't also get to the root of the problem of understanding why there's all this polarization in our world. Why is there so much hate? And why is the hate escalating all the time? Um, it's not like, you know, things are getting better. Things continue to escalate and things get worse. And our world is getting more and more unstable. And people are losing their, uh, their you know, their, their income and their people are losing jobs. How can we prevent all this from happening? So here is what I'm saying. A company that invests very, very seriously, not just doing all these DEI things that I just said that companies are currently doing, you know, and they're hiring processes and po putting policies in place and legal things and how they talk to people and everything. Okay, fine. I'm saying companies that invest systematically in human connection. For me, diversity is the diversity of human thoughts, the diversity of human perspectives. I don't really care what the color of your skin is, but of course, you know, that has something to do with our background and our status and society, et cetera. So fine, we're getting into, we're bringing people of different color, okay, fine. But what this is really about is about implying integral methods to, how we work together, how we make decisions together, how we move forward together. And what I'm suggesting is that when we do things integrally and not treating any group 
as specific or different. When we do everything integrally and we give everyone's voice meaning and we, we listen to all the different opinions, then we will know how to move forward very clearly in the correct direction. And then we won't be making all these mistakes because I think the companies that are laying people off now are companies that didn't make major shifts when this pandemic started. Um, and they just kept doing everything like normal and they expected everything to be fine. And it's not. When things happen, we have to stop and think, really, why is this happening? What is, what's the message? What do we need to change? What do we need to shift? What do we need to adjust? That's the point of these things happening. So companies that don't make these big shifts are going to start laying off lots and lots of people. And it's especially, you know, the huge, huge, huge brands where there's a lot of disconnect. You know, let's put it very honestly, there's a great disconnect between, you know, the chairman and those people and all those um, companies that the, the chairman and the CEO have these parachutes, they get, you know, $60 million and uh, bonuses when uh, everybody's being laid off and being furloughed, they're getting these crazy bonuses. So there's such a disconnect, there's such a gap inside these companies. Um, it's just not sustainable. But what I'm saying is companies that get it and start treating everyone in an integral way. Okay, there's still the hierarchy inside the company. The CEO still makes the decisions, but everything's done more integrally. Listening to everyone, applying the integral method is a very simple way of unlocking un all the untapped potential, the human potential, not the technical potential, but the human hearts and minds of your people. You have all that amazing, amazing value, and it's locked inside the ego. The minute we you apply the integral method, then you get past that, and there's tremendous, tremendous value. So what am I saying? Companies that invest in human connection, not just um, you know how you hire people, how you fire people, and all that stuff. Companies that systematically, if you want to systematically override all this hate and all these egoistic, uh, natural egoistic intentions that we all have inside of us, if you want to override that egoistic system, you're going to have to systematically invest in human connection. And I promise you and I guarantee you that companies that do that will not have to fire anyone because they will be suiting themselves to the next stage. It's a collective stage. It's an integral stage. So companies that learn to advance in an integral way will not have to let go of any people. So it's unfortunate that we're still operating, you know, in the old egoistic mode, the ways of doing things. And it's understandable. Not everyone's capable of making major shifts. Um, but we've definitely seen companies and advertising agencies and amazing amazing people around me on linkedin make huge huge shifts and people have started opening businesses left you know they got fired and they didn't just sit around they they started these new businesses and everything and they're thriving it's incredible when something changes we have to understand what the lesson is and we have to you know get on <laughs> get back on the horse and get back in the game we have to we have to push harder that's what this whole situation is about. It's about us growing up, learning together, learning how to advance harmoniously together through anything. So I hope you'll all be healthy. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye from Israel.